All right, welcome everybody to the comic panel. I'm Cody. I'm Taylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. And today we are covering Stand Still, Stay Silent by Mina Sunderland. Sunberg. Uh, oh, Sunberg. Sunderland. Where did I get that from? <laughs> Sunberg. Americanized the name. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so Shawenta, you chose this book. Why don't you give us a little bit uh, why you chose it? And what is it about? I saw some really cool Instagram posts, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of work that's going into this page. Like, you know, seeing the art and all that. I didn't really know what the book was about, or the comic. Mm -hmm. I think they do several comics. Um, But, you know, seeing all those pages, I was like, oh, I gotta sit down for a while and actually go through this eventually. So I didn't. Um, I was like, I'm trying to find something for us to read. And, you know, I love choosing web comics. It's always interesting to see what's out there. Yeah. You know, it's a free comic. Who can pass that up? True. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, when, when did you see the Instagram post? Like, at least a year ago, possibly more. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. It hasn't been super long. Around the time that she finished? Is that? She didn't finish this one, did she? Yeah, this is finished. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought there was another adventure after Adventure 2. Okay, we should say this comic has been going on since like November 2013. Yeah. And like would update. Oh, do you want to hear what how often it would update? How often? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah, that's... Dang, In that's, 2015, that, you mean every weekday. <laughs> yeah. It's Yeah, it's just a job at this point. In 2015, it won the Rubin Award for Best Online Comic Long Form. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Nice. So we, we figured out there's like, what, 1,500 pages or something? It's it's something ridiculously cool. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. really impressive, you know. And, like, I do wonder, you know, so that's when the updates are published, how much work in like pre-production was done before the first one was uploaded you have to wonder Maybe. oh yeah that's pretty true people usually start with like a buffer right yeah oh yeah because yeah, stuff know. happens yeah. you may not be able to upload but you still want like there also to be don't, an update mm -hmm. you don't want to start on like page one give me a few months <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i'm still gonna get started mm -hmm. it's usually it's like what 20 pages you start out with Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. Sure, yeah. that sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. oh, keep, a lot. keep in mind too, I, if I remember correctly, she started this when she was still in college. Okay. Like, oh. imagine taking classes while doing this. I mean, it's been ten years. Whew. Well, I mean, I'm she's probably sure not at the still end, in college. No. <laughs> No, I didn't say that. I just meant the comic wise. Mm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with comics the size, some people are like, okay, well, it's the rest of my life. <laughs> gotcha. True. All right. So this book is basically, I mean, to give like the very, very basic summary, a. Um, it's so topical. Yeah, it's so weirdly yeah, topical. I, yeah. It's so yeah. weirdly topical. I was reading it. Uh, so, so the story starts out really casually with like um, people hanging out. So a lot of the like book starts out in the northern European countries, mm -hmm. which as Americans, we have a lot of trouble telling the difference between. Yeah. <laughs> it also doesn't help that they, if their flags were black and white, they would all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> we were colorblind this would be impossible <laughs> yeah um and it's just it's kind of that like in the movies where something in the background is kind of creeping up like the news is reporting on something yeah. and oh it's actually a really big thing turns out to be like ah you know what is it was it iceland that's like shutting down its borders mm -hmm. one yeah. of the countries yeah. that's the that's the one that's next to Greenland. Yes. That's an island. But they're like that's opposite. Why. Yeah. <laughs> Iceland oh, wow. is green. Green is Oh my ice. gosh, guys. Yeah, that's yes. Awesome. <laughs> yes. That 
<laughs> I was clarifying for Cody because he didn't know what it meant. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was disappointed. Yeah. In us. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah. Iceland is shutting down its borders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, there's this sickness that's like people are going to be sick for a little bit, and it kind of sucks. You know, it really debilitate the like workforce, and we'd lose more money if we didn't shut down and close our borders for a little bit. You know, just hang tight." common cold we'll get over it and like throughout the prologue things just keep building where it's like everybody's like man this cold anyway gonna isolate myself a little bit just to be careful mm -hmm. there's so many characters in the prologue and like they're so related like in the book okay but once we get past the prologue yeah. it's like the main group that's it yeah pretty much it but was, they're also related to the people from the prologue when somehow. the world was shutting down, essentially. Okay, that's good to know. I was like, I mean, I kind of, I guess I assumed that, but I was also like, I cannot tell how these people are related. Yeah, the, I don't I mean, know. Yeah. They have pictures, but it's not clear okay. right now. We only read to like page 222. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is a jam-packed comic, though, mm -hmm. so that is a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and because like so, the the characters in the beginning, and you see the characters at the end, they just have similar names or the same name, mm -hmm. depending. Oh, on like, the one yeah. I could remember because it was like a real dude. It was like somebody was named Mads Mikkelsen, and we're like, wait a second, that's <laughs> like an actor. That's a famous person. Oh, oh, was it? And and then I like name was Mikkel, really Mikkel similar. Madsen or something like that. No, I think it's even spelled the same. Mikhail Madsen, like, yeah. It's not the same person. Obviously, Mads Mikkelsen is not a character in this book. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it might I, just I, be like somebody being named John Smith, right? I guess. Yeah. I think it's but super then, common. Like 200 odd pages later, there's somebody Mikkelsen. And I'm like, okay, that's they're probably related or maybe not. I don't know. That could be a super common name. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so essentially the prologue is following yeah. a lot of different characters in like, Sorry. I think Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland are the main countries we really focus on for this comic. Yeah. Um, and just the different ways they cope with being like, oh, we just need to isolate ourselves for a little bit. This will mm. pass over. Also, do you think those people who first got the virus or whatever it is mm. are still alive? And the news like where it finally the news admits, like, a few of them are dead. Isn't that mm -hmm. crazy? <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? Yeah. So essentially this comic I would call um, post-apocalyptic. You know, a lot of things have really changed. It's been 100 years? 90. 90 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so close. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't remember if it was more or less. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's been a while, like, a lot of things have changed. The countries still exist to some extent, but there's they have a lot of them have areas that are just like not fit for living. Mm -hmm. And right. it's kind of vague why at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they they say that there are vermin such as giants and trolls. And so, yeah, that definitely takes like a very magical turn post prologue and also say yeah suddenly they're like yeah the mages like people who can like do magic mm -hmm. like there's the two groups that have different types of magic users yeah the icelandic ones are um prophetic they can like you know see visions of the future basically um and they also can do rune magic um and then the Swedish magicians or mages, you know, they um, can see spirits and cleanse mm -hmm. and do incantations verbally. Which we're kind of assuming just arose in that kind of <laughs> apocalyptic time. Like, yeah, it's just normal now. At first I was like, okay, this is a Resident Evil virus where it turned some people died, other people turned into monsters. Sure, but then it's like also magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the it's like, I don't think the 
the disease caused that. No, I think that how I read it was that like basically um, a lot of the people started uh, worshiping like the ancient gods. And so like magic returned basically after. Mm, interesting. Yeah. That would make sense. Worshipping those old gods, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Just, I didn't. I didn't see that that connection, but that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. it, well, there was a lot of talk about their different religious beliefs and how they mm -hmm. were different from each other. Those few countries. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the main story that has started since then is a group that is not very well financed. <laughs> Yeah. Uh are trying to arrange to have some I don't know how to say people. <laughs> just like I mean anybody that like they military, can find. right? Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess. Are are the are the like Turi, I think is her name. Uh in them. She was I, a mechanic, wasn't she? In the military? I, I think, I didn't think that she was in the military. It's more like government job, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like they're attacking each other, you know, over like border disputes and resources. It's more mm -hmm. to uh, protect against the, you know, the monsters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, so this, you know, they're arranging together a group that can go out and kind of explore uncharted territory that's been reclaimed by nature and that is probably pretty dangerous. You know, like we've mentioned, like trolls and giants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got the vibe that it was like nature taking back people, right? It's the way huh. they talked about the trolls. Mm -hmm. I guess. Okay, I guess I assumed it was... Still the the disease because like yeah. even off like ninety ish to hundred years on like it's still a problem like we get information if characters are immune or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I so think like, that's that's all the same thing. Like nature oh, is I also see. the disease, okay. and then like yeah, hmm. if they're malignant, they become this way. If they're not, they still you know transform, but they become this. Mm. They transform into what? Troll or Trolls a giant. or giants. Oh, oh, okay. I did not pick that up at all, but I li I like it. No. Guess we gotta read more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we haven't read the oh. other thirteen hundred pages, so maybe there are answers in those. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we have Turi, um, and then her cousin, Lolly. Yes. Yep. And then. We have Emil. So Emil was a cleanser. Mm -hmm. So he does like magic stuff. Lolly was a night scout slash he's also a mage. Um, mm -hmm. Which he's very solitary kind of person. Night scouts, you know, they go out and check out the area, watch for danger on their own. Mm -hmm. And he's able to handle himself pretty good. Um, you know, Turi, his cousin, who's actually older. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she's very cheerful and a little seems a little childish like mm -hmm. naive at least yeah but yeah she was a mechanic and then they get they get two grown-ups more of grown-ups than them who are supposed mm -hmm. to have experience but since this is like such a shady it's not shady but it's just like such a poorly <laughs> right right poorly so funded <laughs> They have to just get who they can. Yeah. So they get two people who kind of have a military background, but also seem to have been fired a lot of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Particularly the the woman, Sigrun, Eid. Because I okay. think that was the person so, that was fired multiple times. Well, Mikkel Madsen. Mm -hmm. it's not, uh, see, it's close, but not quite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he... He's the one who's like a farmer slash yeah or sorry healer and also a farmer because mm -hmm. he's a yeah. Dane and <laughs> okay I, do you think that any of the uh, different cultural like differences or like ways that they would make fun of each other 
is like real. Uh, oh, like, in the author note, they did mention sometimes where they're like, yeah, I know this is a silly little stereotype. Okay. You know, when I've read met actual pe- people from this country, like it hasn't really been like that. Mm, gotcha. They're like, but they still all are beautiful, though. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I wasn't so like there is a comment about the Dane being like just a farmer and like doing nothing else kind of thing. And so I wasn't sure if that was like a actual stereotype or like someone something made up right yeah well i think it's been like a lot of you know it's world building right they had that Mm. whole page about the different differences that have arisen since Mm -hmm. the apocalypse pretty much Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah the two older people who are trying to take care of them so yeah the, the story pretty much so far follows the group being assembled them interacting like Emil he grew up wealthy I think and so he Mm -hmm. has a lot of preconceptions about himself and other people around him he's not necessarily mean but he's just like he he feels the need to like control his image and appear very good to others Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that could be recognized for his greatness Mm -hmm. a little bit yeah he's um so I'm gonna try and say this correctly um two so this exploration i guess was started by four separate people uh two of them are married named siv and trobjorn something like that uh vasterstrom who are uh emil's aunt and uncle mm-hmm. and emil's last name is also Vester Strom, I think. Yeah. 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 So yeah, his aunt and uncle. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're both Swedish scholars, so kind of on the down low, one of their interests in this is recovering like old books that people would pay a high price for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't remember which country it was that it was talking about it, but one of them, it, it, one country in particular is like the, uh, like uh, there's obvious bias in the writing, whoever is writing these, you know, in universe, who's writing these uh, things about different countries, but they okay. call them like, you know, hoarders of like, you know, any old oh, yeah. piece of paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll pay a high price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait, th- well, this the Danes, right? I May, think so. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah that I mean, right. that, that would make sense because they're also like physically connected to the rest of the silent world is what they call mm. like the rest of the world that has fallen. Yeah. While the rest mm. of them are mostly disconnected from the rest. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. It's so interesting how that ties together with the like title, Stand Still, Stay Silent. Mm. How so? just mostly like the naming conventions and like I'm really curious what it implies Mm. well I think that I think that was on one of the information pages where it's like that is the advice when you encounter a troll or a giant Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. instead of like don't scream don't yell don't try to attack it just hope it moves on Yeah. almost like a t-rex I'm more curious I I meant in the larger like theming aspect because like yes they have a little in-universe thing but what does that say overall is like the world being too you know apathetic to the situation like what caused this how are they dealing with it is it not the right way of going about it i'm curious what the comic has to say about that Mm -hmm. um so yeah we get right to the beginning of where they finally get some of their equipment which is like also kind of not great you know not it's a little low critic. quality yeah refurbished possibly mm, yes <laughs> and also we get to find out that a lot of the uh crew members are well particularly the adults like sigurn and mikkel have a lot going on like what is it they thought um sigurn could like drive and she's like ah 
How oh, hard yeah. could it be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like Mikkel's whole thing where he's like a healer, and they're on a base at that time, right? They're on like one of the army mm-hmm. bases, and like I don't know if it's a captain or who he is. You know, he's someone high up there. He's like, oh, "Hey, yeah, I yeah. thought we fired you, Mikkel. Yeah. Get out of here!" And he's like, "Actually, I'm here for a different job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't fire me." <laughs> he's he's a very jovial dude. It's like very unassuming. Mm, right which like for him to tell like i think emil got bruised from that train ride oh yeah when the was it a troll attack mm-hmm. or wait something. no not troll it was a beast something, what was it i think it was, was a beast all right well you know something from the silent world like they try to keep the train tracks um very clear but something got over the fences and like attacked it the train mm. and like they got jostled because they were all doing like in sleeper cars or something. Yeah. And like, I think that's when Emil got bruised. I think so. And then Mikkel. Because he didn't have a seatbelt on. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Trying to protect his sort of new friend, Lolly. Mm-hmm. They're, they're bonding, sort of. I feel like it's a little one-sided. <laughs> Just think of the. Well, I don't think Lolly thinks about anybody no. too much. <laughs> I just, she doesn't dwell on it. Made me think of the panel where um, Emil's like, oh, yeah, I get along. Like, he's really easy to talk to. Like, I get along with him great. And he, like, oh, yeah, like punches, punches him, him in the, in the shoulder. shoulder. And then and he Lolly's t- like, why would you do that? <laughs> no, no, Lolly was like, why do people keep hitting me? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Mikkel telling Emil that, like, oh, that bruise, that could be cancer. Mm. And Emil's like, oh, my God, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, just to get him to, like, patch himself up. I feel like that was what Mikkel's intention was, to, like, just get him to huh. see him as useful. I don't know. Interpretation. Yeah. I- because, like, he's very obviously knows it's not cancer, right? It's a bruise on the face. Yeah, but he's hmm. like, could be cancer. I didn't. I didn't take that, but yeah. He's very clearly misleading him, but mm. for what reason? Mm-hmm. Is that I just who he I is? Was, Does he just lie constantly? I was willing to accept that's how face cancer worked in yeah, this new yes, world. Yes, same. Like maybe that's what the disease <laughs> does now. I don't know. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, I I didn't get to I that part, but I don't think you bandage like... the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really strong suspensions of disbelief. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I Until I get Cancer. all the rules laid out for me, I'm willing to accept a lot. Okay. I guess you have to look through all those lore pages. <laughs> they talked about cats being like weird super guardians. I forgot if to they say get that. Training. Cats have professions now. <laughs> Which I will not be charmed by. Some of them are wearing, like, uniforms, though. That's pretty cute. Yeah. I miss that. I mean, they're not, like... Cats? You miss the cats? Wearing uniforms? They're yeah. not, like, like fully clothed, but they have, like, things on their shoulders, you know? And they're different... like vests. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not coming to mind, but okay. I'll take your word for <laughs> <Okay>. it. <laughs> But yeah, cats have uh, important jobs now. If they get proper training, yeah. they can be very useful for sensing things and so forth. I do remember and, like, that part. Even technically fighting vermin, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah the, the A class are able to somehow. Yeah, and, and in this world, vermin do are included as like just the monsters. I'm like, it is kind of wild to think they're like, a cat taking down a troll like you you have to at least have like a battalion of cats right? <laughs> like <laughs> well what if a troll isn't giant i guess yeah i guess trolls are maybe small i got the well i got the sense that like it also would just like doesn't it hurt wildlife too so wildlife becomes yes malignant. most yeah. other animals other than cats died or other mammals other mammals Mm-hmm. Goodbye, like, dogs. I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, that was sad. Yeah. You know what? Whatever, author. 
there is a <laughs> reason that you were gonna do... say whatever to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a reason nobody in the prologue had a pet dog. There was like two pet what are you cats. Talking about? <laughs> that, or, that, they had a dog. That family yeah, in the, the car. car. Oh, you're right. That's true. Okay. Their hey, dog did you is catch? Dead. Did you catch that the dog in the be- in the prologue it has the same name as the cat that the Vesterstroms have in the main story? And they have oh. the picture of that family, by the way. They do? Oh, oh. I missed that. That was how I figured out. Oh, these people are probably related. I just figured it out by their names, but. I want to see that picture now. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Okay. I... So that yeah, that's pretty much the summary of the thing, right? Like post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. world, ragtag team put together, poorly funded, mm-hmm. probably not the greatest equipment to go out and track down stuff. Yeah. You know, explore a little, chart some areas, see. stay Oops. safe, and then also gotcha. retrieve yeah. some valuables, hopefully. Yeah. That's just the beginning. Okay. Man, yeah, I feel like I didn't miss much not uh, getting quite up to where you guys got to. I only got to page 132 out of 200. Well, they're finally out there. They're yeah. finally out there in the tank vehicle. It's like a snow crawlery looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they finally have like Lolly going out to like scout ahead to see the best route. I, yeah, I read a little farther forward, and, like, we're just, like, we're, like, 250 or so. It's, like, hmm. just getting to the first books and maybe starting to see some trolls. Maybe. Okay. Show me some trolls. I want to see some trolls. <laughs> I'm just curious how they fight, honestly. Yeah. Like, are they going to pull out guns? <laughs> or cats. Yeah, are there weird, like, vermin cats? Are we going to see, like, cat stand battles? I don't know. (laughs) That'd be cool. It would be kind of cool. If you noticed... Oh, go ahead, Shwenta. I was Uh... was just going to say that um, it would be cool if, like, you know, they're about to, like, pretty much, like, just die, you know, from an attack, and then, like, you know, just a bunch of cats just, like, you know, jump on, like... (laughs) I would not suspect anything else. You know, yeah. So I say probably going to happen. Um, yeah, I haven't read ahead at all either. So I don't know. But I will say, I mean, I did kind of notice the front page has the main characters there. And we are apparently missing one extremely important character who becomes like the main main character for the next adventure. Oh. So... A lot of developments are supposed to happen, I guess. Hmm. Good to know. Did so, not know that. All right. What did you guys like? Um. So yeah, I think this is like a really like interesting world. Like you know, this this has a lot of world building. You know, which seems to be like you know a commonality in the web comics that we've read. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean i still appreciate it i'm like it's cool you know just like all of the different little things the way that the world has changed um in 90 years post dystopia mm-hmm. yeah yeah once they were like 90 years later i was like oh that's cool like yeah really going for the post-apocalypse mm-hmm mm-hmm I think it's really it's really clear that they have um, they have an interest in like alternative history kind of thing of like these different countries like they very obviously know about these different countries because they you know live in the area mm-hmm. and have certain like <laughs> a lot more knowledge than us that they're taking and running with and doing some interesting world building. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't think we said it, but the. The author, at least from, like, the comments underneath each, like, post, it was, like, something Central Finland or so. Yeah, yeah, they live in Central Finland. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm biased for the Finnish, perhaps. (laughs) I don't know. It seemed almost like, you know, Finland got, like, less, uh, less, uh, 
spotlight in some ways. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the last flag in the little cheat sheet. And uh, okay. uh, out group preference. All right, gotcha. <laughs> I mean, the two main characters we get introduced to first, Lolly and Turi, are like Finnish. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, so maybe none of that. There's more than I thought. No, there's like there's a lot of variety. Yeah. No, that makes sense though. Um, yeah, I like also, um, so in the prologue, I liked that, um, I don't know, like basically, so one, one small thing actually is that I liked that, uh, when they had like the kind of almost crossfire style, like political talk show, it was like, I was like, I can't actually tell who is like supposed to be like the liberal and who's supposed to be the conservative here. Like, it's like, I've heard that there's a lot less political division in those countries, but I'm also like, this is weird because like, I, this is just really confusing, (laughs) you know, especially like we've seen like very similar debates play out now that we've lived through a pandemic, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was just like, I'm confused how I'm supposed to think about these characters, you know, mm-hmm. like ultimately just the arguments are what we're supposed to be hearing and they don't really matter, but yeah. Um, it's just, can you, I just can't imagine like two people actually fighting on screen that like physically. Oh, that, that's yeah. what it like they get. Uh, nah, they were just, you know, like kind of like hold me back, but <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> I don't know. I feel I felt like that was a little bit more like for the comic because it like you yeah. know it started to zoom out a little bit more. So it was like you know you have to make the actions a little bit bigger, you know. Mm. To but and like I wanted to say I think I view the prologue and like where the story starts a little differently mm-hmm. or a separate, very separate, right. which is kind of true for a lot of prologues especially post-apocalyptic like you have all this build up for this you know prologue of like this virus is going crazy and Mm -hmm. it's like skips ahead a bunch of time because we're interested in the the after effects over a long period i guess Mm -hmm. yeah um but like looking at the prologue i you know i went into this not knowing anything about it i wanted to stay that way like i got the sense that it was like fantasy-esque in the wilderness so like staying in that prologue and being like it kind of seems like everyday life Mm. and then watching the like unraveling as like different people try to deal with this it was really fun Mm -hmm. like i mean i know we kind of went through this (laughs) yeah (laughs) which made a very weird experience thinking about this was in 2013 yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I was reading it and I hadn't like scrolled down far enough to see the date when it was published and like I got to like Iceland closing its borders and people were like, "Man, this is an overreaction. People are just gonna get sick and get over it." Yeah, yeah. And they're gonna they're gonna laugh at Iceland for closing down their borders and they're like, "When was this published? <laughs> I have to know." And I'm like, "Oh no, it came out in like 2014. Was when they got put out." Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I read that and I just assumed that it was a comment on, you know, the novel coronavirus. Mm. And then I like <laughs> basically read a few more pages and then yeah, I finally like just accidentally scrolled down and saw the date and I was like, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people have been writing books and, like, stories about, like, this kind of situation and then what would happen next for a long time. Yeah, definitely, Mm -hmm. definitely. But it it is really fun to see it play out without, like, knowing beforehand. Yeah. I I always love when it's like, huh, that's kind of weird that they're doing that and just, like, the unraveling of society. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Might as well see it on page rather than reality. Fair. (laughs) Destroy your characters. Make them break, not each other. Yep. I think you messed up the last part of that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yeah, I... Yeah, I thought that, like, you know, it was interesting to see, like, yeah, lots of people... Or different responses from different people. And, like, you know, as, like, you know, it's only 
really within the span of like a week, you know, I think it's like day, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then I think uh, month three, like, I mean, mm, we see yeah. little bits of like later days, but it's like, you know, very much a <laughs> clip show, you know, much faster pace than the first few days. Um, mm. And then on to month three and then skip ahead 90 years. Um, and that was a little crazy. Yeah, I realized. Um, it, I, yeah, I, I like a lot of the reactions from like everyday kind of characters of being like, "I gotta go back to my job." I know she said she's closing it for a week, but then after that, mm-hmm. I have to go back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, life is gonna be normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always liked watching like disaster movies because of that like initial part. I don't mm. super care about the after part. So, like, that's why I was surprised when it was, like, 90 years later. And I was like, oh, it's going to be, like, everything sucks. But no, it's it's interest- It's more interesting than that. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, there's huge drawbacks that haven't fully been explained. Um, but just to see how countries who are kind of really close to each other, some of them, uh, in, like, this Northern European european region how different they become like that military base was so cool to see Mm. like a lot of the like environments i think are really cool like not even art wise like it's just cool concepts like Mm. even the train like Mm, i don't know i've usually trains i find pretty boring it's always like oh we got to go on the train expect like a steam powered one or something Mm. But like, now this, I don't know, I guess it's more high tech. Yeah, this was an armed train. They had saws. <laughs> Cut through anything in their way. Cool. At the same time, it was like, there's like electric fences. Like, mm, it's just kind mm. of like normal things. It's not right. like, oh, we've built like the most high tech stuff to deal with this. It's like, yeah, we're working with what we know, what we can make. Mm-hmm. And also, we have magic, which I'm still not sure about. I think it's really interesting, but I'd, I'd have to see how they use it more. Right, yeah. It is It is interesting that they just say that it's there and kind of, like, give an explanation of it, but don't use it any earlier, you know, once we know about its existence. I mean, I guess that probably tells us it's not, like, Harry Potter magic where people are using it to, like, brew their coffee mm-hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> right, yeah, it's it's pretty limited, mm. kind of stuff. Yeah, I did wonder that a little bit because, like, just as much as like you know, it's like, oh yeah, these you know, one side can use like you know runes and the other one can use incantations, and it's like, but like, it, yeah, it seems like probably the effects of those are probably pretty limited. You know, is what I would mm. guess basically. Oh, like very specific. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It seems like the applications have mostly been viewed as like, I keep saying military, but I mean like tactical, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you think that like anybody, because what I got was that you can be a mage or anything like that just with specific training. No. No? People are born with the powers. Really? Yeah, because it's like basically the ability to either because I think that the like, you know, the casting of spells, for lack of a better way of saying it, is like kind of uh, less what is focused on. And the more important things is the ability to like, you know, either see the future or see spirits around you. And so Mm -hmm. like those things just happen one day and it's like ah i guess you're a mage you know okay. it also kind of doesn't like you were saying cody it doesn't seem like something that would be like wow this sure is helpful to making breakfast every morning yeah <laughs> yeah um, but yeah i i do still get the feeling that there's like obviously this wasn't true before this whole event happened so there's got to be some sort of like inciting event where it's like now people have magic (laughs) (laughs) i'm super curious about that Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, I am like, you know, like I said earlier, I'm like, I do think that we're supposed to assume that it's like, you know, the worship of the ancient gods, but it's like, did modern religion just fall apart because, you know, there was so much crisis and darkness, you know, like in, but in the 90 years, or was there like some sort of like, magical event you know where it's like ah yes these are <laughs> you know i i kind of took it to mean like we're experiencing horrors you know that we never faced before and so we're turning to the gods that we have kind of neglected before right yeah yeah that's kind of what i assumed too um you know there isn't like some event that people mm -hmm. like reference or anything um, but yeah, but to what Shawinto was saying, I am like, was there any sort of inciting incident or at least the first time that somebody got these powers, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and it could be verified and it wasn't like, nah, you're just crazy. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, like, yeah, the countries aren't, did they do like a national announcement? Like magic people exist by the way now. Mm. I don't know. It's curious. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it is curious. I, I want to know more about it, too. Like, just, yeah, I don't know. It, it is weird. Like, I think that there was a part of me where it was, like, uh, not to get too far ahead of, like, you know, the, like, stuff we didn't like or anything, but I was wondering about, like, you know, like, is this all it is going to be in the prologue? You know, I feel like there's going to oh, be yeah. more, you know, and then, but then at the same time, like, I felt like so far removed from what they had set up with 90 years. Right. You yeah. know, I was just like, whoa, okay. I mm -hmm. feel like I need to know more now. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, if they went with the prologue, I would have been just fine with that too. Yeah. I think by the, I think I've, I don't know if I can say that. Like, I, f I feel like I would agree that I felt for the characters in the beginning mm -hmm. enough to be like, okay, I can read a story about you guys and what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's a different story pretty much, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and like... Uh, yeah, it, it could easily just have been, like, not a prologue, but an actual, like, prequel, even. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of that thing of, like, what information here is helpful to me caring about the characters later, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I do, I like, I'll say, you know, we can talk about this more when you get to what we didn't like, you know. The beginning is a little hard to get into, but I really do end up liking the characters, even when I was like, kind of like, I don't think I'll like these characters. <laughs> I just mm. kind of set on that. And then I was like, okay, I can see how like they have their own roles and this is supposed to be who they are, not necessarily who they'll always be. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's capable of change. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'll, oh, go yeah. ahead. Well, just, you know, thought about like, this is the intention. I'm not accidentally, like, getting these vibes off the character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I could definitely tell, actually, like, you know, um, the characterization of the characters are, like, you know, really strong, where it's, like, you know, it's not just, like, I just wrote this dialogue, you know, like, I, they felt um, very real and, mm. um, and distinct from each other. Mm. It took a little bit, but yeah, they did become very distinct. Mm. Um, Emil, like, <laughs> I always love characters who are a little full of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very interesting how immediately, like, he's just kicked in the gut by the story as, like, <laughs> you know, everything keeps messing up. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, spilled food on yourself. Are you always this messy? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, in Turi's case, where. She's like, oh, you know, that's fine. I always spill stuff on myself. You're totally fine. <laughs> Whereas Lolly's like, man, that guy's kind of dirty. 
Uh, yeah. And just being, yeah, like a rich character like we talked about. Mm -hmm. A little bit full of himself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't always get his way. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I liked. Um, yeah, like I'm, I can only really think of, I mean, I, I, I think that I could go more into the world building, but I think that like, you know, we, we kind of mentioned it, you know, in one way it's like, there's a lot, but then also I'm like, it only kind of dabbles in that, you know? Cause I mean, I think also, yeah, if there was too many like, uh, you know, appendices kind of, you know, the extra little bits, then it'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, where's the story? Where's the character, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, we're definitely still very early into the story. Right. right? Yeah. Like yeah. We can agree. You know, there's a lot of the prologue. How much of it was prologue actually? I'm so curious. It was 68 pages was the prologue. Six the okay, first 68, 68 pages of prologue, which is kind of, as we agreed, separate from the actual story. Yeah. <laughs> Where they have just started to go into the wilderness. So we're very early on in the story. A lot of this is definitely yeah. probably set up for stuff later on. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of info there to like consume. But it's hard to really judge the story yet. Because it hasn't done a ton with that yeah. info. Mm -hmm. Through yeah. no fault of its own. Because we haven't read that much. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. Um, also, I was going to say that I liked, or so this story reminded me of Monstrous in a lot of ways, but I like it better, I think. For sure. Yeah. In what ways did it remind you of Monstrous? Um, you know, basically in Monstrous, you know, there's, well, for one, uh, cats are military leaders. Um, well, I guess in this one, they're not leaders, but, you know, they're used in the military. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and military cats. Military cats, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, two, they're, like, you know, it's basically there are monsters and magic, and, but it's also kind of this semi-realistic world. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I, I don't know. I just kind of felt like they were kind of trading in similar themes, I guess. You know, it, it's hard for me to pick out exactly why it reminded me of it, but it just, like, gotcha. it did. But um, It's like magic embedded into society. Yeah. I think Monstrous definitely, because we technically got through more story in Monstrous mm -hmm. in probably a very similar amount of pages. Like, mm. proportionally? It's hard, it's hard. You know, it's a webcomic. These pages are pretty big mm -hmm. and longer than a typical issue. Mm. Um, but, like, Monstrous goes off in, like, secret societies and conspiracies and all this. Whereas I do feel like Stand Still, Stay Silent is more down to earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Ironically. <laughs> like, stuff, yeah. <laughs> stuff feels like possible to some extent like you can see a lot of the inner working it's not just like magic waves mm. hands <laughs> mm -hmm. ah hand wavy i got you yeah sometimes you just you gotta feel like there is an inner working there even if it's never fully explained to you right mm -hmm. with monstrous it's just like everything's magic cool yeah <laughs> even that pen is magic <laughs> They, I mean, they do probably <laughs> not not to over talk about what we're not covering, but I mean, I feel like they also did a lot to try to explain it, but uh, at the same time, it was like still evasive. <laughs> no, but I I can agree with you guys. The down to earth versus not, I I can see mm -hmm. that. There's also a lot more characters in that. I I know there's a lot of characters in the prologue for this, and then like I think once we've gotten to the team. Like, it's just going to kind of be them for yeah, a lot of this. Yeah. I think that it, I wish I would have gone in 
knowing a little bit more, like, I mean, obviously I knew that it was a prologue starting out, but I didn't realize that there was going to be such a significant time skip, you know? I thought we were seeing these characters just in the world before significant change, but we Mm. were going to still follow them. (laughs) And so I, like, committed a lot of energy to being like, okay, these are the characters. (laughs) And then it's like... Oh, no, 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 <laughs> that's mm-hmm. not at all. <laughs> um, so that's why a little bit feels like, you know, there's a lot of characters to remember is because when you start out knowing nothing, you're like, you're like, these are the characters. Mm. And really, it could have just been like, no, I don't really need to know these people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I need to remember their last names to mm-hmm. see who they're related to. <laughs> you're right. So we can say like, I, I do feel like you, Cody, where I'm like, there's not a lot of things I can say because I feel like it's really easy to summarize. I liked the world building. I find that the story is probably headed in an interesting direction, in my opinion, because I really want to know about like everything that went wrong in those 90 years. Mm-hmm. Like to create a silent world. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? Like, I want to see some trolls. I want to know... I'm really curious about what the overarching story is. Like, government mm-hmm. conspiracy, human causation. Like, are they going to solve the apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit unsure about that. And then also what we said, we liked um, the characters are pretty solid in who they are once there was enough pages. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, like, their interactions are very interesting. Uh at least between specific ones. And I do feel like that it'll be explored more in interesting ways. Um, do you want to get into what we didn't like? Well, one thing I wanted to add okay. um, is that the thing that I am impressed by with Mina is like the, the last issue or the last page that we read was page 222. <clears throat> that was finished or published it was published November 27th or 24th of 2018, which is a year and three weeks after the first page was published. And I guess, like, to me, I'm like, man, that's like, she's busy. <laughs> she, she was putting out work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I'm very impressed with that. Yeah, keeping all this in one, like, streamlining a lot of this stuff together, like, that's... That's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, like, getting into what we don't like, I mean, it's a web comic, so you are expected, I think, to some degree to spend more time on it mm-hmm. than, like, reading a page, next page. Like, typically, oh, you know, you it's being released. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of just, like, big, what would be a spread, like, landscape shots with maybe two or three speech bubbles. And then like, if you're getting the next thing next day, maybe you wouldn't feel too bad about that. But like, it's like three in a row and it's like, all right, that's maybe a little bit too much. (laughs) So are you talking about pacing wise, like visually? Yeah. Like I understand like there's not a lot of time happening in between these events, but it feels like it's being stretched out. Cause like, yeah, I understand. She's got to make more of the pages, Hmm. but the, the pacing did feel kind of off and it's like you guys said you liked the characters once they were introduced I felt like I didn't get a chance to really learn what these characters are about like I know there are a couple who have families and there are some that the families back home aren't like super jazzed that they're going to the silent world but like as soon as we get like a little bit about these characters it felt like we were adding more and more like or getting introduced to more Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah, I think I felt, you know, similarly about the prologue and the main story as like you were talking about Cody, where it's like I started to go, man, am I going to have to remember all these people? And like suddenly it's a new family. And I'm like, OK, like, what am I going to do with this information? Like, are we just going to watch the world be destroyed and I have to feel sorry for them or something. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't get the I didn't know what direction it was headed in and it felt confusing because of that. 
<laughs> yeah. And, and I, then within oh. the main story, it's the same. Um, this is partially because of the visuals and how some of the characters can be very similar looking. Uh, but yeah, I was having a lot of trouble in the beginning with telling characters apart. I was like, is this the same character from before? Oh, wait, no, it's 90 years later. They're mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, are they related? And then getting like that small hint of like a family photo and being like, I guess they're related. I'll <laughs> never know. Like, I need a little bit more, I feel like. But that's the thing again of like, is it a webcomic where it's a webcomic? So am I expected to some extent to be like, oh, uh, looking into more of what they say, like being able to analyze stuff more? So I get the foreshadowing more versus just like reading it through and being like, there was a picture 60 pages ago. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, it does. You know, there is like, um, I feel like the idea that you will uh, be reading as it comes out and possibly even like if you like it enough, you might be rereading it while you're waiting for mm. new updates, you know, or, or reading the last few chapters, you know, mm. especially if like maybe maybe there's even not reading it as it comes out each day, but maybe you're reading it on the weekend, you know, so you're, you get like five at a time. Mm, yeah. yeah. So absorbing more information there's so much information in this comic. Yeah. It's not as bad as some we've read, but like it's definitely it's still a lot. Like once we got here, I was able to like pretty much explain the gist of it once I like took a step back and was like, "Oh, that's what happened." But as it was happening, it's like the characters themselves are being inundated with so much info. You know, we're trying to learn about a whole new world. It's a little tough mm-hmm. at times. Yeah. To like care about every detail that they're telling me. I I like kind of f- oh no you go. I I kind of had I I like kind of tangentially related in that. But the problem I had was like with the pacing, particularly, and I don't know maybe it is because it's a web comic, but I just felt it was really slow, and like reading two hundred twenty two pages. And you're, like, we, we're all in agreement, I think, that, like, that's only, a, like, a small fraction of, like, the actual story. Like, those 222 pages aren't even enough to be, like, what's the whole story about? Like, we, like, still didn't get that understanding. And that, to me, is a negative. Mm-hmm. But then again, like, it's a webcomic, so maybe I can give it some grace in that. Like, okay. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a really long webcomic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say because it's like, you know, I feel like it's a criticism in American comics of uh writing for the trade, you know, basically oh. like, mm. you know, having having things being able to be like very separated out rather than just writing a story like more naturally. But and you got to end on a cliffhanger. Yeah, and ending on a cliffhanger. But at the same time, you know, with web comics in general, and in this one in particular, it is kind of like with page by page releases, it's like, okay, well, where's kind of the like stopping point, you know? Where, like, how do I know, you know, that like this is like we've hit a milestone, you know? Like a story milestone, basically. Like, how do you know that? Yeah, oh, okay. you know, without or that it's coming up or you know anything. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, should I read a couple more pages and then I'll feel a little bit more satisfied before I get, you know, I decide to read more? Or mm-hmm. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, yeah, so we read two hundred odd pages, and we really hit like one, what would feel like a natural stopping point when like you hit the time skip and that's like, that is the end of a part of the story. Mm-hmm. And it's like 180 odd pages later, still only feels like we've kind of just started the next yeah. arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We hit the end of chapter 
four, right? It's the beginning of chapter five, mm-hmm. which is like, what it feel happened? Like that, yeah. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like we've hit the end of like chapter two or something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Which like, that's not even counting the prologue. If we do look at that way, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. It's, it's really, I feel like it helps a little bit with like developing the characters, but I do kind of wish some of this development happened like out in the wilderness where like this story is probably going to take place a lot of. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or it's like, instead of we're show- just watching them travel from location to location mm-hmm. and kind of interact a little. And I think it's a little bit of a desire to world build, mm-hmm. um, you know, world build as much as possible. But is this information important to like the trolls I'm going to see? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that. That pretty much is how I felt, you know, where it's like, if I were doing it, I would have like, probably, honestly, I feel like there's a part of me that liked the prologue, but again, I think that it would have done better as a prequel where it's like, just start where you know you want to start at the yeah. 90 year time skip, you know, yeah. like, I, not, Oh, well, yeah, just like 90 years in the future and then have the prologue be how do these individuals act separately before they come together, mm. you know? Ooh, that would be good, yeah. Which individuals? The, the people in the, like, normal world? No, the people in the future world. The Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely, like, a true prologue probably should show the characters, like... Like, I think that's kind of important to see characters on their own how they act before they come in contact with the like the rest of the cast Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. always nice but am i asking them to shove in more (laughs) of Mm. the before well no no that's what like essentially the prologue other parts yeah do that part okay yeah the prologue would be more or less the first chapter but i'm also like cut more of that out you know (laughs) yeah i i would i said it like if you wanted to include the stuff in the prologue that in my mind that's like more flashback kind of stuff you know or and then even have a flashback because because my my second issue that i had was like you're taught you're introducing the idea of trolls vermin beasts and yet we don't see that till page i i don't even know like 100 yeah we don't even get something. the hint right like till yeah. later because yeah. it's such a normal thing i guess mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so in my mind i'm thinking like you know you know just have like flashbacks to other attacks you know if you if you want to wait till like in modern day attack because yeah. also during this time those things are like on the way out like we haven't seen a troll attack in a decade or mm-hmm. things like that so it's like it makes sense why at least in universe, there isn't a troll attack more recently. So in my mind, I'm like, have flashbacks. Like, why is it such a worry? I think we need to mess with the pacing more with <clears throat> starting in the past, moving to modern day, and then adding flashbacks on top of that. Well, I, 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 I would have said the prologue. It's also like a Jaws scenario, yeah. right? It's a Jaws scenario where like, you don't want to show too much of it or else it's not scary. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I'm kind Fair. of like, what I would have liked is like, you know, like not too much because if, if you have characters like, you know, overly describing things about the world like that will like one, it's like too much text Two, yeah. it's like why now it feels like you're just putting exposition into the mouths of the characters that they mm. wouldn't normally say. Mm. But, you know, that it can be done well where it's like, you know. Like, oh, I've never seen a troll before. What do they look like? You know, or something. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know. I yeah. would love to see like their kind of like tall tales about it. That would have been fun. Yeah. You know, like, oh, they say they're like twenty feet tall and look like Slenderman. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like something that's very clearly like because people don't see them that often. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. Some sort of interwoven kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, they definitely could have mentioned them before. I get I get the feeling that it's supposed to be kind of like a... It, it, to some people, I'm sure it was a really cool reveal. Like, oh my gosh. And there's trolls. Like, it's not just like an isolated world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, though, it's it's 
weird because, um, you know, I feel like, and maybe it's just like partially like less familiarity with Scandinavian um, myth and such, but like, it's weird that we've only heard troll and giant and then there's kind of more vague beast vermin Mm. uh i think one other thing i can't think of but yeah it's like those words aren't very specific monsters like what what are those like at least i can conjure an image of a troll and an image of a giant and i might be wrong about what those look like but i have some idea Mm. the other things i'm like well vermin are definitely just like rats and you know other kind of rodents but like I get the feeling that there's like monstrous vermin, you know, not just the rats. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so do you feel like you're missing some cultural like connotations when people are like it's trolls out there, and like people from like these countries might have a lot more myths where they're like, oh, they typically look like this in our myths, and then the like, web comic is going to be like actually a little different, um, but building on it. So yeah, I think that there's some of that but mostly i'm just like what are these more these more vague monsters that you keep referring to and is Mm -hmm. there like cultural precedence for those words you know i get i i get what you're saying not just like for trolls though i think i think i feel like you're you're hitting on something i'm thinking about overall where sometimes it does feel like it's supposed to be it's probably an intention to be naturalistic like people aren't going to talk about stuff that they're so used to right Mm -hmm. but also it does feel like sometimes we are supposed to follow a lot of conversation where they're like yeah uh mention specific group name are working with other specific group name and like so you just feel like you're being vague at like you know where it's some uh stories where it's like oh i have important news to tell you but I can't tell you here. I'll tell you next chapter. <laughs> it's mm. like, no, just tell me now. I have no idea what's going on. And you keep using random phrases. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And I don't, I, I wonder if a, a little bit of it is cultural, but I do think some of it is trying to be naturalistic. Right. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I guess what it really comes down to, like, I mean, I I actually a lot of what you just said, I agree with too. But like, um, I just want to know: is there other specific monsters other than trolls and giants that they just aren't mentioning, or is are are trolls and giants the same thing? Maybe, or are beasts and trolls the same thing? You know, mm. is is a troll a type of beast? Mm. Give me a lore page. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> Wasn't there, there a was, lore page, actually? I think you just might not page. have gotten there, Cody. Oh, maybe. That, that could yeah, be, Yeah, there was actually. a lore page between, like, the difference between a troll and a giant, where, like... Oh, okay. Trolls are mostly the size of the thing that, I guess, the disease killed. But for some reason, giants get big mm. through some unknown mechanism. Possibly a curse? Because huh. that's what this, like, feels like. <laughs> Okay. That's interesting. I think I skipped that. It'd be so yeah. weird if it's like a curse. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Wait, but so so just just to since I didn't see the page, is that are we supposed to understand that there are only two kinds of monsters then? Uh, beasts they did are mention the other animals. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. but trolls are people. Mm. Mm. And giants thing, are also it's, people. It's a little vague about it still. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, because they always talks about like trolls are usually not significantly larger than the creatures they kill, but it's like the silhouette of a person next to it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So presumably it's all people, but I don't know that. Okay, let's see. Being a little coy with it. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that, yeah, that at least makes me feel a little bit better that that does get delved into. You know. But it still does feel like, like I read that page, like Jake read that page, still a little bit unsure about how much of that info is like concrete and is it enough for me? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, there's nice mm-hmm. little lore pages. Mm-hmm. I did like those as an addition. Like, usually I don't usually like those I kind hate of flavor those. pages. Yeah. But this, they felt all right. <laughs> Plus, because like, it felt the like f- they like came from something in the world that wasn't just for our benefit. Right. Mm. Yeah. I liked the cat page. That one looked cool. <laughs> It did look cool, Cody. <laughs> yeah. I, I will agree to that only on the one where they're talking about the languages. And then the cat's tails have the flags on, on them. Like a flag. That one's like, also pretty yeah. cute. <laughs> the but flag of the country they're cats. representing. <laughs> Say it again. That'd be harder to do with real cats. Yes. <laughs> be... Yeah. I mean, I even like the language page because it explains some of the, like, like, oh, we can sort of understand each other Mm -hmm. and we sort of can't. That's the thing. It's also like a very realistic thing of being like, yeah, we're from different countries. We're not just going to know what the other person is saying. Yeah. But also it is like another hurdle for me to have to think about. Right. Being like, who is speaking what right now? Oh, they're speaking and translating over to Mm so-and-so. Yeah, but imagine being the author having to like network that out where it's like okay i can't have these characters just have a conversation between each other because they don't speak the same language i need a third character there to have to translate (laughs) oh man yeah it was uh, yeah it was kind of funny even like being like oh yeah when they first like kind of grouped together and they're like oh yeah you know we don't all speak the same language and uh one of them is like oh, well, I can translate for you and you can translate for me. And then, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, like, this triple chain of translation. I'm like, that's surely not going to cause any confusion. Mm. I was like, Sig- this will not be a problem. Sigrun was like, oh, yeah, you know, do you translate for, for the both of us? I mean, you know, that that's all fine and dandy until we're attacked by some troll and... Or are you just going to pop up out of somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> what if I tell him to run? <laughs> and then, the, the, then um, Turi's like, well, I mean, no, I'm not going to pop out of nowhere. But, you know, he's pretty smart. He can figure that out. <laughs> he can figure well, out there's danger. Well, yeah, that was funny, too. I think it was uh, Turi and uh, what's the cousin's name? Lolly. Lolly. Yeah, like I think... Uh, in the scene that I was talking about just now, Tori, one of the things he's, uh, she. she she says is, um, like, basically, I'll, I'll translate for Lolly, which, like, you know, they speak the same language, but it's like, you know, basically they have to... I, I got the impression, basically, that uh, Lolly has to hear it from... <laughs> mm. f- from uh, Tori? Tur- Turi? Turi, Turi. Yeah. yeah, from Tori. Um, in order to kind of understand what other people are saying, even if, you know, she understands. Mm. Well, I think, I think so, Turi studied, I don't know what other language, but what whatever language it was, was one uh, or the other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. I guess yeah. maybe uh, that was more literal, but <laughs> the way that I interpreted it was that Lolly was only going to listen to Turi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say, too, that um, earlier, Shawenta, you said that, like, basically people are kind of same facey, and I agree with that. Um, and to that point, I also had trouble distinguishing people's genders. Yeah. I was, which I'm not sure is, like, really that important you know like story-wise but it was just kind of like i was like who like yeah yeah i do oh, specifically I have for... trouble with that at all oh really okay I, i'm with you cody it sounds like a skill issue skill <laughs> issue <Oof. laughs> don't worry cody i'm i'm in that boat too but in more of a who are these people kind of way. <laughs> yeah um I will say I do think one of the things that arose with like when I first read this so it's it's been a little bit since I read it since it's, we had to like delay this mm-hmm. but it had that webcomic thing come up 
And as I was reading it, I was like, this is the thing they do with web comics. Um, the little bantering, mm. like, everybody's got a funny little quip to say. Mm-hmm. Jokey thing. And I'm like, be normal. Like, everybody always has to say something. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, just the nature of that daily release schedule per page. Everything has to kind of feel like Always it's... be entertaining. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because you don't want somebody's, like, the first time they read it, it's like, man, this is, like, a really down page. Yeah. Especially if it's, like, the the updated page is, like, the home page of your website. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. that, can't, you can't have that. You want mm -hmm. to check out the other 200 pages you already have out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, it also just felt sometimes like, I don't know, just, just anybody act normal for five <laughs> seconds. No, totally. I mean, I agree with you, Shuenta, but it's also like, you know, we're seeing this commonality and I think it, it makes sense even though it's kind of um, annoying or I just wish it wasn't like that. I don't know if it's like because it's up it has to be updated so often because this is what the audience would love because i know that those internet users are eating this up <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely yeah it's it, especially oh i forgot because like it's been a while since i read it like the way they would explain things where it's almost like i don't know how to describe it it, it is the banter thing of like quippiness you know we're in a scene where a character gets caught doing something and they're like oh me i wasn't doing anything i was just um you know relaxing and just like mm. just the she little, little mm -hmm. short sentences kind of thing where they would do that where they'd be like yeah this is super safe like train except when it's not like in da da and just oh my yeah, gosh just yeah. say one thing like <laughs> it's pretty safe mm-hmm there's so much dialogue sometimes. Yes. Sometimes there's just so much. Yeah. Oh, that that reminded me too that um, the so they do the little uh character info boxes when a new character is you know introduced, mm -hmm. and it's uh it reminded me of what um, Brian Lee O'Malley does in his oh, books. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is like you know they give like you know, basically like stats and then a little descriptor. And sometimes the descriptor is more of like a personality thing than like just, you know, like 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 chief, like for instance, like, you know, they might say like, you know, this one's like, you know, arrogant or something, a little arrogant, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the thing that like, I guess felt different than the way that Brian Lee O'Malley does and like the what I didn't like as much is that it felt more it didn't feel as like I, I don't know like natural where you know like some of the descriptors basically it felt like that's just the same as what the writer would have written on their character sheet you know mm. it didn't feel like this is what like it 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 felt like it was telling me directly how to feel about this character. Yes. Yeah. Rather yeah. than just like this is who this character is, you yeah. know. <laughs> no, I I got that with even, you know, the the arrogant comment. It was like yeah. no, this is clearly this is how this author is interpreting this character. Mhm. Mm so, yeah, yeah. I think one of the problems that ends up happening with this kind of dialogue that everybody gets is well partially things feel less serious in some ways and then also nobody feels like a real kind of adult mm, like yeah. even when like we have the like military guy like the grumpy retired military guy who's like putting this together you know just so he doesn't have to retire um oh okay yeah he even him, it feels like I'm watching someone being written by someone who clearly can't emphasize. Em I can't say the word right. Impetizing. But you know what I mean. Yeah. I feel like it's adults written by kids in some ways. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like they have the part where um, 
the two, the couple who helped put together this team, they're like trying to find a cure. And they're like, notable side effects include blindness, hair loss, and malignant tumors in the abdominal cavity. Did not work as a cure vaccine. So that's back to square one, or you heard them, back to square one, everybody. I hate this job so much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's probably fun to read, but for some of the like realism they're going for with the story, it feels like it undercuts itself. It's trying to be too funny sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can totally it's see like, that. We find so often with web comics. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I so, something in that same vein was like, to me, there was a little bit of, like, same faciness, but I even saw it with like their personalities. Like, there was a lot of characters that acted and talked the same. Mm. Yeah. So that's where I was like, ah, there needs a little. This needs to be more distinct here. I feel like. Uh, we did say they are kind of different. I feel like they have singular characteristics that make them very different. Mm-hmm. But they do kind of the, like the like tertiary stuff does feel very similar. Yeah. Like oh, Emil is arrogant, but uh, versus uh, Turi, who is like naive and upbeat. Mm-hmm. But then we get like. Um, God, I forgot her name. Was it Sigurn? Sigurn, the, yeah. Uh, Sigurn. Um, she's also, like, upbeat, but doesn't know what she's doing. So is that mm-hmm. just another naive person? Mm-hmm. Like, just a little bit older? Yeah. I, 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 I compared her more to, to Emil as, like, oh, she's arrogant. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it feels feels like they do kind of like step on each other's toes as far as like a lot of the smaller stuff yeah which there's so much of it in this comic mm-hmm. yeah i definitely agree with that yeah i wish that i could i would have gotten introduced to some of the other characters more because i think that i did get introduced to the whole team probably but like most of the characterization that happens mm. to like I think the two older ones, I'm mm. kind of like uh, I don't really know who they are, what they're about, you know. <laughs> um, which is on me to be clear. I'm not listing something that I didn't like. That's, <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, is there anything else that um y'all didn't like? I will say. Even though, like, I don't have the problem that you guys did with that dialogue, I feel like I had the same problem with the, like, amount of physical comedy that's, like, in mm-hmm. the book. Like, there's a part where they're going to the vehicle they have for their expedition. Somebody leans on a rearview mirror or something oh, yeah, and yeah. falls off. And instead of, like, acting like a normal person, they just pitch it yeah. through the rest of the hangar and it lands on somebody's head. I like, did laugh who, at that. Who does that? <laughs> it's not. Okay, so so I this also continues with that. On the train, Emil was getting on top of the bunk and he kept stepping on the guy's face. Right? Mm, mm-hmm. Did you did you find that? Yeah, that yeah. was Yeah, it's just like why? <clears throat> So, like they're I, like I, cartoon I, characters. So they get like it's a comic and it yeah. shouldn't always be realistic all the time. <clears throat> but like it's especially weird when they're contrasted against like normal people mm. who aren't protagonists in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting observation actually, I'll say cuz it like it does make me like question more, you know, like is there kind of like was the writer artist on this basically did she say well this is a comic you know which is also like you know in certain you know translations a cartoon you know Um, and like so it's like everything can be cartoony you know there's stretch and squish and you know people do things that are just kind of zany and funny because it's a cartoon you know Mm. or you know, is it, but at the same time, they are, you know, doing 
like difficult subject matter, you know, apocalypse, like, you know, mm. stuff. So it's like, do does that make the character, or should the characters be more rigid, even though they're drawn in this style, you know, in, in rigid, you know, literally and in personality? Mm. I think just like cutting back on it a little bit, like some of it's very fun and it is nice to see like, something happening even if it's not something major like you know they interact with their world and things change because of that a little bit but like i don't know yeah it's just so much mm -hmm. right just mm -hmm. constantly and that is goes back to the webcomic thing again of like is it just because we're reading this like very fast technically for a webcomic mm -hmm. not the intention yeah mm -hmm. I don't know. It's yeah. a little bit of it, it's so exaggerated to a point where like Yeah, I, I really get that, Jake, where I was like, My God, act like a person for five seconds. Yeah, it, it's not even I like think, it behind your back, but just like throw it through. It's like I don't get it. I mean, yeah, that's what I was expecting of like hide it behind my back. Oh, nothing suspicious here. Like See, I was hoping kind of I was hoping that when that the guy who that mirror fell onto. I was hoping that was the same guy that got stepped on in the train because that happened. To, he got hit in the head three times if that happened. You're saying up it, Taylor. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying it. Bring it back full circle. Okay. Because okay. well, nobody comes in three. He's already got hit twice. <laughs> he needs to get hit a third time. Yeah. I, I, I just di yeah. I pretty much diagnosed the web comic with like written by college student. <laughs> i mean that's fair that's fair like young person I, that's yeah. not like a bad thing like i do think people around that age would probably find this really fun but yeah. it's a little tiring <laughs> <laughs> the hand didn't even show up <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i'm trying to like say I, you're a college student no i was trying to say i found it funny but <laughs> did, so you liked it's, every single time or do you did you feel like it was too much, like some of us did? Mm, no, I, I, I found a group fine. I, I didn't have any complaints in that regard. That makes sense. Ultimately, <laughs> it is a matter of taste. Yeah. It is, you know, stuff we didn't Taylon, like. you can yeah. handle movies that I cannot. <laughs> this, like, makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess I will say that, and, and granted, I didn't see as much as you guys saw. Like, you know, for instance, I did not see the mirror scene, you know, so... There's a lot of gags that maybe I just didn't see and therefore was not worn down by. Mm. But at the same time, I'm like, I think that, like, so I can I can see what you guys are saying. And, like, you know, I'm like, yeah, that probably is too much. But at the same time, when I'm actually actively reading it, there isn't a lot that actually, like, bothers me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, maybe I don't necessarily enjoy it, but it, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Mm. I'm just like, okay, this is, this is the tone of the book, you know? And, and with that, you know, the tone is pretty consistent, I'd say, mm. um, based on what I read again. Maybe there's other parts where it's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Tone isn't necessarily something I... I would notice unless it was very drastic, but I didn't notice a major tone shift. Yeah. Yeah, consistent. Mm hmm That's the thing. I didn't mind it for like characters who were younger, like uh, you know, the the cousins. Right. And mm -hmm. like a meal. But yeah. then once it was like kinda uh, I, I guess the two the couple that started the expedition, like the the husband being like, yeah, when I found out about how expensive those books are, I was like, thanks for the job. I quit. And mm. like, I like, it's funny, but, it, you know, it's I do think it's supposed to show how reckless he is. But, yeah, mm. I don't know. Sometimes it just was too much. I, I will say, like, now I'm thinking about it. There is one moment where I kind of agree in, like, I didn't. I didn't like how that was portrayed. A l very zany. Was like it, back in the end of the prologue where we get introduced to Siv 
and all of them. When, it, like, so basically they go to the, I, I don't know, the government to ask for a loan. Mm-hmm. And so the oh, government yeah. person comes back and he's like, oh, yeah, here you go. And they're complaining. They're like, well, this isn't nearly enough. He's like, were you not intending to go? Yeah. And then Ziv and Trojorn, something like that, yeah. were both, like, clutching each other and were like, no. Like, we have kids. And I, I didn't like that. I was like, ah. It's... Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I just feel like it's so much of it's trying to be entertaining sometimes that I do lose out on who the character actually is. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. That makes me think of that. Because I, like, I want to know what their actual reactions would be like. Because mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't feel genuine sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it does just... I guess that's what it is. It, sometimes it feels like the author's like, this could be really funny. I mm-hmm. want to do this. And less of, like, the character is this way. I see. Well, Mimi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I think with the next co- web comic we read, I'm going to have to really try to, like, filter for that. Because, like, yeah, I'm just very good at accepting the (laughs) world and quirks of you know that kind of thing where i'm just like you know it was same with um when we read uh pixels for you too like we didn't really like that book but like when i was reading it i was like oh yeah they're just doing this style of story you know this kind of thing Mm -hmm. that i'm thinking of like tiger tiger Mm. yeah that was the one they were on the ship and then yeah, she was the dressed up as him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not pirates. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, yeah. Ti- er, Tiger Tiger is a lot more similar to this story. But yeah, you know, mm-hmm. just the same kind of thing where I'm just like, you know, okay, yeah, this is just how it is. You know, the, the be entertaining always, you know, and maybe to find more of like the truth of the character, you just have to like put on like like uh shades to it where it's like okay well you know they did this really cartoony over dramatic thing but at their heart you know they care about their kids and they don't want to die yeah. you know well they had like that's the thing right they had those like certain small moments where the characters would just like not be around other characters usually <laughs> and like be kind of normal for a moment there mm-hmm. and like breathe and like look at stuff or be like interested in the world around them and i was like oh my god they're i'm not trying to be constantly entertained i don't know (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's hard to describe it but yeah those moments where that happened i was like that's really nice Mm -hmm. i would like it to kind of balance out a little more right Mm -hmm. no for sure everybody's just constantly talking and twitching and Mm -hmm. doing things so i i was thinking about this earlier and it um but like, do you do you think that you would enjoy a an app that it's like a web comic app, but it specifically was like you can only read one page a day of this particular comic? No, <laughs> no, no. Okay, Lon, we can discuss your entrepreneurship afterwards. <laughs> Would you I, enjoy your library books if they only let you read a page a day? See, but here's the difference, Jake, right? Web comics, For we recognize no self control. <laughs> we we recognize that web comics are like more of a daily kind of thing, like, you know, they're not all in issue chunks, right? And so it's like sure. if we approach it in the sense of, you know, we're reading this all at the same time, we notice, oh, there's a little bit of some weird weirdness here in like how we're used to ingesting comics, yeah. which is three issues. But then if we go more on the level of how someone would actually read it when it was coming out, maybe it would help make the comic. I don't know. I don't know if better is the right word, but like, you know, help us to ingest it in a different way. Yeah, but then how would we do that for our show? We could only read stuff with like seven pages in it. Well, this is not specifically for the show. <laughs> yeah. I, Which is why we should not be discussing it right now. Yeah. Uh, to kind of get back on track, though, but in the same kind of conversation, 
I think that, um, yes, there are things that, you know, because at least there's the idea of re of the people that are reading it as it's coming out or, you know, even in, like I said earlier, you know, in smaller chunks of maybe like, you know, five at a time. Mm. Um, but I think where the problem comes is not having a very clear, like, you know, being it really what the problem is actually is that it's too um, stretched. I can't think of what the term is normally, but, you know, the like we said earlier, we are at the end of chapter four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, and, and how many chapters are there total of the first event ad adventure? Like 21 or so, 22. 21. So yeah, so we're like, you know, roughly a fifth of the way mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And yeah, and we don't feel like we really know the characters. We don't know the world. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, there should just be a better understanding of what, like, you know, where you're headed and not having everything so spread apart, you know? Mm. So, so that, that was something that I noted too. But the question I had was like, is it more so like it could have been written better to better facilitate that or is it just because this is a longer story and I'm just begin like scratching the surface like yeah I mean I think that that is like you know a a question that doesn't really have a concrete answer but mm. it is mm -hmm. you know the kind of the what we are discussing at most is like, you know, is this a matter of writing? Is it a matter of format? Mm. Or, you know, is it a matter of the kind of a mixture of the two, the way that the story is being chosen to be told, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that ultimately, I don't think that you can put all of the blame on the format. Mm. You know, okay. because like, it, you know, and I think I was the one that probably first started bringing that up as a thing. But like, and, and I think that's important to consider it. But at the end of the day, you should know that your audience isn't only going to be people that are reading from day one mm. each, yeah. you know, each day. Um and so you should be able to make it enjoyable for both types of audiences, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and, and some people like really expressed, built-out worlds that, you know, have... But, like, at some point you're just... You get tired, you know, and I that's what happened, you know. Granted, I read it... Read what I read in one day, mm -hmm. but... Um, I was just like, at some point, I was just like, okay, I'm ready to put this down. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, what I fall down on is that I think that it's a, a matter of writing and more specifically, you know, pacing. Mm, gotcha. It's just so much, but how much of it is essential? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah think... it's definitely, I think I had a, I have a nicer view of it after having read it a while back and like thinking back on it being like, oh, the things I liked stand out more than things I didn't like. But mm -hmm. yes, as I was reading it, I definitely experienced fatigue. It's like these pages are so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they're, they're much bigger than typical um, comic pages. So mm -hmm. there's a lot more in one page even. Yeah. And, and another thing I was thinking about in the distinction between, like, format and writing is that webcomics traditionally don't have an editor. Like, I mean, you are yeah. supposed to be your own editor, you know? So it's like mm. there's a lot more freedom to just be like, ooh, but I think this is cool, and I think this is funny, and I think, yeah. you know, and nothing gets cut, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's sometimes pretty awesome about webcomics, but, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not always good. You know, that makes me think of is like, ima like, imagine, so like, 
you're venturing into this new thing all in all on your own essentially like you may have people behind you that's like oh yeah we'll maybe proofread or something like that but like sure it's yeah. pretty much your own work and just imagine like you know you're you're kind of fumbling your way around you know it's like that's how that's how it feels like almost it's like trying this different thing trying this like while also making sure we're sticking to the main thread and it's like i'd almost think like imagine if you didn't do that <laughs> it's like it's like no well, you should you're also going to do that for comics though like web comics are the prime place to do it it's free yeah. i can put it out whenever i want right like yeah. we've read some the comics that i've chosen for this show have been pretty professional level Mm -hmm. Like there's some of them that change dramatically between pages because people are, yeah, kind of blindly stumbling their way through. A lot of people who do comics, they say like, don't start with a long web comic, first of all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also like, if you got to figure out how to finish a book properly, maybe start with a web comic if you don't know how to fit this in. Mm. My God, though, doing a five page a week web comic. <laughs> Yeah. At this size of pages. Yeah. Yeah. But like I'm finishing my thought, like basically I'm try what I'm ending at is kind of encouragement of like, no, but do, you know, venture out, like do try and yeah, for experiment, sure. you know. Yeah. I think that that makes sense, you know, it's in that is kind of a good point in that like, you know, I mean it's kind of the same for any series in any format that we read you know it generally you know with a couple of exceptions we start at the beginning of stories you know mm -hmm. and so it's like we don't always get to see where people go mm, true you know um so yeah there, there is potential that you know as this story goes on perhaps you know the things that we didn't like it all comes together it comes together mm. yeah you yeah. just can't see what that plot thread is going. <laughs> right. yeah. It was important to introduce man with head stepped on. Because <laughs> he Evil later villain. got a mirror fell on him. Joker <laughs> origin story. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was it important that we met the grandma in the prologue, though? Mm. And her cat. Mm. It's like, it's a funny little joke. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 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 Okay, I think we should, unless there's anything else, move on to what we thought of the artwork. Mm. I thought the the nature, like those splash pages, where it was just nature, or not e like some of them aren't even like an entire splash page, but like where like one panel at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. but it spans the whole width. Like, those were really cool to me. I really enjoyed it. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I don't know if I can say, it, like, this is the entire color scheme, but, like, the kind of color scheme of, like, orange and blue, I think that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. And, like, it, it's tried but true. It just works. <laughs> yeah, they're complementary colors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I can agree. I, I mean, that's, why I saw those pages in the first place. Like, I don't super care for the stylization of the characters in this way, typically. But, mm. like, I think they, you know, they're putting out a lot of pages a week. It's kind of a quick hand, you know, stylistically. But it's pretty gorgeous once put together with the environments. Mm. I think the environments, yeah, really shine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I liked the art overall. There was kind of a watercolor stylistic choice. Mm. But there just seems to be a lot of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's rare that I would ask for less of a comic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, maybe uh, there should have been less. What, are, you, are you saying there should be less panels, less pages? Are you talking about yeah. those? 
Splash... Probably pages, because a lot of them, like I said, or at least the ones I remember, are big spreads that yeah. don't, like, they're impressive, but they're only impressive so long. Mm. Yeah. Those are the ones that were, like, you know, three in a row that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. Okay. Or, like, that's what it felt like. Maybe it wasn't actually three in a row, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, it felt like there was too many. They kind of dominated over the story parts of the comic. Hmm. There's, there's also just so much talking heads kind of things because they have to talk so much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with art. I no. quite like it. But yes, I think overall for the comic, if we want to go back to overall, not even just visually, so much. So yeah, much so much. <laughs> and I, oh, yeah, we touched on it. The same faciness. Mm hmm. It's hard. It's kind of this style. Yeah. But you gotta, you gotta mix it up, man. Mm-hmm. And it's tough too because I was just looking at a page, and there's like sometimes, which is you know very normal and good, I would say, depending on the situation, where you know, again, it is a talking head. You're two talking heads, you know, but um, they have reduced their features, you know, made them less specific. But because they were already same facey, I'm like, mm. oh yeah, <laughs> that one has long droopy hair, you know, on sh- to shoulder length, and this one has short with a little shwip at the top, you know, and but otherwise their faces are kind of the same, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of that's also like I think a lot of them have very light colored hair too. Mm-hmm. Like oh. I'm having trouble struggling here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like... So that's, like, once the cast was reduced to just the main crew, I was like, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. But man, man, it was hard to get there. Definitely. Especially when there's side characters or characters' faces are obscured for a moment. And, like, color-wise, a lot of the stuff is kind of the same color. Like, we get a lot of splashes of, like, skin tone and hair color. Mm-hmm. But, like, their outfits, for the most part, are kind of one color, probably to kind of save time. Yeah. With, like, accents and stuff until later on. I mean, for the amount that I read, I think that, um, I think Taylon hit that, like, you know, I'm pretty sure there's just different shades of orange and blue and then, you know, grays and blacks and whites. Oh, yeah, spot. Well, the spot blacks is what they start to rely on for, like, the outfits. Mm, okay. Mm. But, yeah. It's like, also, they, yeah, they are sort of wearing uniforms that are similar to each other, too. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, God. Yeah. I, I think that's about it. Like, it's a really expressive style. Like, when people stylize their characters in this way, I don't typically expect a lot of detail for, like, their environments and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool though I, I really want to see more in the forest because I think their environments are super cool yeah uh, one thing that I'll say too is that I think that um, they they do I can tell that they've thought about putting their panels from like multiple interesting perspectives and angles too mm. You Sometimes know. I think it's a little too much, though, where it, like, feels disconnected f- between panel and panel, where it's, like, suddenly we're over here. Okay. Yeah, I could see that, maybe. I got to the train with the saw page. That surprised me for a second, because <laughs> I didn't get to that part in the story. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. I-, I could see that happening, though. I'm not sure if I, in particular, like, felt that way, but, yeah. It didn't bother me too much. It's just a nitpicky thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so overall, like like I said, like, when I first read it, um, beginning parts, hard to get into. I really felt that same faciness was killing me, like, trying to figure out who's who. Mm-hmm. It, hard to get my bearings. And then once it started to get into it with lore pages and, like, 
minimizing the character, minimizing down to like the main cast. I was like, okay, I can do this. And mm. perhaps I look back on it with <laughs> rose tinted, <laughs> uh, you know, it's been a little bit and I'm like, huh, I actually like it a lot more than I thought I originally did. Mm. I can see myself reading more. Mm. I oh, think well. the initial like fatigue definitely hit me at first. And so now recovering from it, I'm like, yeah, I want to know more. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that honestly happens to me a lot with <laughs> with a lot of stuff. But yeah, for me, I'm like, especially, you know, again, I didn't read as much as, uh, as the rest of you, but I'm just kind of like, ah, nothing's, you know, Nothing's happened yet. Yeah. When is it ever going to happen? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, like, especially, like, we don't even, it's like you said earlier, um, you know, we know what they think they're doing, but, like, what is going to be the real hook that changes, you know, the change that will come at the end of the story, you know, we don't have any clue for that, you know. So that's usually kind of important to me for the hook, like to kind of know where we're going. And it's not like, cause I mean, if we just took it at its face value, it's like, okay, well, this is just going to be them exploring. And sometimes they come home and then sometimes they're spending a long time in the forest and mm. sometimes facing danger, facing danger. I mean, I guess that's interesting, but, but that's vague also too, yeah. right? Danger. Uh huh. Are, are they gonna get infected? Is that a thing they have to worry about? Like, yeah. I guess that's true. It doesn't really feel like the stakes are very clear. Mm hmm. Like, yeah. why did they choose this mission? Mm. Just money? Like, yeah. yeah. Money and, uh, you know, one of them was like, oh, I haven't seen the world, so adventure. Mm hmm. But. Yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely, that's a good way to put it, you know, that I wasn't coming t to myself of, like, what are the stakes, you know? Yeah. What if the brother just was like, actually, no, you're not going, because I'm the older one here, you mm -hmm. know? Like, would that really have mattered? <laughs> he just walks away, and then they kidnap yeah. him or something. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Not super interested to read more, but also if I did, I think that it wouldn't be a bad time, you know? No, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like, just, you would enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't not enjoy this. It's just that it also didn't hook me Yeah. either. Yeah, it kind of does feel like when's the hook gonna come other than being like cool world building yeah <laughs> it's like we're a fish waiting for that little mm -hmm. uh bait the yeah literal, the literal hook mm -hmm. yeah i yeah i would agree it's like i'm sure there are people out there who would really like this but i am not one of them at least through 250 odd pages <laughs> yeah i will Tell say a thousand more i i will say like the the artist and you know, writer slash artist has expressed that she has met the love of God and is now a Christian. And that's exciting to me. And I am definitely looking forward to reading her Christian testimony book. And I have read Journey Upstream, which is her current comic that she's working on. Mm. And so I, I didn't know that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I... I didn't realize this comic finished, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, Jan as of January, 2022, it is finished. Possibly an epilogue might come along. Uh, and yeah, she mm. ended up converting part, not part way through, but towards the end, you know, yeah. 2020. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? No. Mm. All right. Gorgeous comic. Yeah. Very cool mm -hmm. feat of mm -hmm. many, many pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I will say, because, you know, I what you said reminded me. I didn't really talk about it, but, yeah, you know, we, we just kind of were like, oh, yeah, the art's good, you know, or serviceable, but, like, 
Yeah, it is really pretty, I think, you know. I forgot. I Well, like, it's pretty. And I was like, eh, but they kind of minimize, like, they have spot blacks and stuff and then a color scheme that goes over the top. So we never really see a lot of things in super detailed color, mm-hmm. which, like, on this kind of time frame, of course. But, like, if you see some of her later pages, it's like, wow, really went all the way in, especially for forest scenes. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's more gorgeous, surprisingly. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a little bit more exciting, at least. My, my guess is, like, this is, like, math, so I don't know if it's an exact science, but... Um, mm, math and exact <laughs> science, I think. <laughs> so, you know, it took her a year to do 222 pages, and so that's, like, four pages a week. But then you look at the entire run, and that's somewhere, like, 1,100 pages mm-hmm. over 10 years and that's about two pages a week mm, okay. and so i think somewhere around there she like gave herself more time i'm guessing mm. but okay. like that's where the i'm not sure if it exact said right 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 <laughs> okay yeah you'd have to look at the exact yeah. dates and stuff like that yeah yeah it's like 150 pages a year mm. yeah yeah Okay. Yeah. Overall, though, I didn't. Yeah, I'll just reiterate that I thought that this was just all right. You know, it was it was, uh, mm-hmm. it was a web comic, and I feel like I'll probably feel the same as you, Shuenta, that I'll basically look back on it and be like, "Yeah, that was good." You know, <laughs> but I got a little bit fatigued. <laughs> I think it's a bad sign when I have trouble summarizing it when like not much happened. Mm, yeah. yeah, like a lot of little things happened. uh... all right well i think that's all that we have for this show thank you everybody for listening this has been the comic panel i'm cody i'm taylon i'm jacob and i'm shawenta and we will see you next time thank you for listening if you like this episode be sure to subscribe to this channel as it helps us out on the youtube algorithms and getting us seen by more and more people you can also reach out to us with any thoughts you have on the things we talk about on Twitter at the Comic Panel One and on Instagram and Facebook at the Comic Panel. Also, if you want to leave a comment, please do. Let us continue the conversation. 